Watson on the logo and ready for the tip. And the opening tip controlled by Wake Forest in the black and old gold and Virginia in the white. It's important for Steve Forbes' group to get off to a solid start on the road here. They don't want to get this crowd into the game because NBA feeds off of that energy. Clark comes away with it for Virginia. Cavaliers are 10 and 6 this season, coming off a win on Wednesday at home and a close one against Virginia Tech, 54 to 52. Virginia is just 3 of 13 from long distance. They go inside, and it's Caparo. Caparo is coming off of a pretty solid game. Not a big score, but he has his career high 16 points the other night. Also had nine rebounds to go along with those 16 points. Both career highs for Caparo. Redshirt Jr., 7'1", 242 pounds from Santa Fe, Argentina. Played 30 minutes off the bench for the Cavaliers in that close victory against the Commonwealth rival. Walton trying to back it down on Cafaro. It's an aggressive battle, and Walton wins this one. They are being deliberate going into big Dallas Walton, the very first play out of the tip. They got a shot for him that he missed, this time able to deliver in the paint. So Walton, also a seven-footer, transferred from Colorado where he played three seasons. First year at Wake Forest, so 13 in black. Shot clock at 10 for Franklin to Kafai. Oh, bounces off, second chance. Big follow from Gardner, that wouldn't go as Virginia crashes the glass. You know, Francis Cafaro got that early bucket, but the other night he was dynamite. They got him the ball inside, and he was able to score seemingly at will at times, really playing as he's capable of. He hasn't had a lot of points this year, but Wednesday he was dynamic. And tonight they're going to him early. He made one, and he missed the easy one there in this same possession because they got the rebound. Cafaro was 5 of 7 from the floor in that game against Virginia Tech and Gardner has earned some free throws. Cafaro with his first start of the season. And you're right about the scoring. Coming into tonight, despite the fact that he scored 16 for head coach Tony Bennett in the win on Wednesday, Cafaro averages just 4 points per game and just a little bit over 3 boards per game. Yeah, he's not exactly their go-to guy, but if he's going to play like he played on Wednesday night, he's got a chance to get more touches. The go-to guy is at the free throw line. 76% on the season for Jaden Gardner. As you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Tim, a transfer from East Carolina. He is from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Heritage High School. A little bit of extra motivation, perhaps. So Virginia with an early lead. You get the sense that this is going to be a scrap from whistle to whistle this afternoon and into the evening hours here in Charlottesville, Virginia. Walton on the block. Wake has to find a way to get some transition opportunities. Three possessions, and they've had to attack three times that pack line defense, and it's really difficult to get shots, although Walton has gotten what he's wanting each time. Great job by Wake Forest of executing. So the foul was on Kafaro to put Walton at the free throw line, 64% on the season. And after that foul, Kafaro goes over to the bench with Walton at the free throw line. Close to eight points per game. Kafaro has a bucket, but he will join his teammates on the Tony Bennett bench for the moment after that personal foul, and Walton has the second free throw. They don't go very small, really, because Kadeem Cedric is 6'11", and the 21 into the game for Virginia. This is Clark along the baseline. And you know, the spacing for Virginia is so different than other teams. They play inside the three-point line. They don't lurk around that three-point line. A lot of two-point shots, but they're capable when they're knocking down shots like that. Moravia wants three. Cedric the clearance. Another matchup to watch, Williamson and Clark, both 
on the offensive and defensive ends as Clark dropped it low. Shedrick, and the ball comes to Williamson. Now, Clark is making him earn every step coming up the court. Yeah, he, this is when you want to try to run. is the first real opportunity, but you see Virginia so quickly to get matched up and shut off that penetration. Shedrick picked up the foul for Virginia. Got tangled up inside there. Steve Forbes is the second-year head coach for the Demon Deacons. That sole loss was in their last game at home against Duke. They had won 10 in a row at home to start the season. Best start since 2014. Wake almost threw it away, and the shot clock is inside of 10. Arabia stepping back. There are no easy shots in this building for the visitors. That was a heavy contest. They let them get away with a little bit of contact there. No whistle. That's fine. Great pass. Gardner up and under. Lucius comes away with it. Virginia has missed a couple of inside. Wake is making it tough. Lucius for three, and he knocks it down. And off of that miss, you see Wake Forest push it up the sideline to try to get that secondary break going, running to those three-point line areas. And that time they got a high percentage shot and knocked it down. Nobody takes more threes. Nobody makes more threes for the Demon Deeks. And Isaiah Musius is 42nd connection from three-point territory. Five on the shot clock for Clark. Trying to shake Williamson. Defense. Ball away in the paint. Tough shot. <laughs> Catch and release. Walton offensive glass. Even for the jam. And Shedrick knocked it away. Negation at the rim. That was a big time block. Nothing easy. Shedrick who averages almost three blocks per game. One of the leaders in the conference. Franklin show and go. Rattles out. Walton had the position. And loop it low to Walton. Draws the double. Perimeter movement. Williamson. Virginia will anesthetize you if you're not careful. You want to run, but they don't want to run. They walk that ball up, and they make you take your time on defense and spend your energy at this end. And over the course of a 40-minute game, it wears you down. Inside Beekman. Williamson. Three-on-three -three effort. Behind the back, spin it up off the glass and score the two. And he was fouled. Some delicate footwork right there, boy. Transition is easy behind Duke. And then you've got Virginia, the top scoring defense in all of the conference. Yeah, in fact, Virginia's number 11 in the nation in terms of points given up. And that's kind of below the pay grade for Tony Bennett, right? They're usually in the top three. That's true. Williamson finishes off the old-school three-point play to give Wake a three-point lead. The Beekman on the point now is Tuey Clark goes to the pitch. Cody Statman is also in there for Virginia. He's number 23. Oh, Ravia knocked it away right to Steve Forbes. The head coach across the way is Tony Bennett for the Cavaliers 2019, the national champions. He was the ACC coach of the year. They won 35 games. They went 15 and 1 in this building. As Gardner comes up short. A little vulnerable this year with three losses already in this building. Six and three overall for the Cavaliers at home this year. They're 10 and 6 as we start play this afternoon. Seven games on the slate. Told you the Duke has already beaten NC State. Shot clock's at 10 for Williamson. Driving in. Challenging that Virginia D. Williams able to save it to LaRavia. Shut down. Right to Gardner. Pretty good look. LaRavia was poised. He didn't rush it. Got a good step back. Just couldn't convert. Yo, 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 yo.
Beekman. Arabia came out to challenge. Franklin tried to drop it low in a congested area, deflected away. Up ahead, Laravia. Adin C also in there, number 20 in black for Wake Forest. C is a really good defensive player. Sealed off the drive and intercepted the pass. So Williams missed everything with that initial shot. There's time on the shot clock for Laravia gets pounded into the court as he and Gardner hit the deck. Could have given that foul to a couple of different guys. Wavia will go to the line. He earned this opportunity. Really absorbed some contact there, but the air ball from Wake, fortunately, C was able to get the rebound and give him the second opportunity. So you see, Laravia took a little bit get going. That home game against Duke with 14 points ultimately. He had three fouls in the first half of that game against the Blue Devils, and that was, again, the first home loss of the season for Wake, 76 to 64. They did shoot 44% as a team, but they only went two of 16, their worst three point shooting performance of the entire season. Yeah, and Steve Forbes said after that game that his guys maybe have made a little bit bigger deal of playing Duke than they should have. They were playing uh, outside of themselves, turned it over a little bit more than they usually do as well. They did out rebound Duke 36 to 29 in that game, but Duke shot 51%. And Dunkero had 24 points to lead all scorers. Despite the loss, Wake has won two of its last three games. Virginia's won three of its last four. And they're three and one in their last four home games. Statman cut off on the baseline by C. Watch that shot clock. That's good enough. Cavaro's back in. He must shoot. I don't know if he intended to use the backboard, but he had no choice. I can tell you he did not. <laughs> The backboard used him. <laughs> so Caparo <laughs> back in there with one personal foul. And again, we're keeping a close focus on that interior battle between 22 and white and 13 in black and old gold. C let the defender fly on by. Acrobatic attempt, but Caparo altered the shot severely. He did. And Virginia has gone big with Shedrick and Caparo on the floor at the same time. Here's Shedrick. Nice slice. So the whistle brings us to a timeout on the court. Charlottesville, Virginia, Wake Forest, and Virginia. And uh, we hope you're ready to get out here and join us very soon. I may be dating myself, but I remember when the G-Man played with the Sixers a long time ago. That was my guy. I loved him. Still do. The All-American from Duke, 1978 National Championship game. Let me give you a piece of advice, Tom. Don't okay. ask him about the 78 National Championship game. <laughs> or Kentucky, okay? <laughs> or Jack Gibbons. That's right. <laughs> now, great, great memories of one of the best college players to ever suit up, especially for the Blue Devils. His number hangs in the yeah. rafters at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And so, Mike, we're thinking of it. Wake Forest and Virginia. Igor Milicic coming into the game for Virginia. Where's number 24? Carter Witt has also come in, 11 in black. Clark the steal. So even on a steal, they have a chance to run it out. And, and Kehe Clark, Kehe Clark elects to just kind of slow it down. Let's run a set. That's Virginia basketball. Clark ends up with the basketball. That's a three. Able to get it back. Beekman pounds it into the court. Statman out of the corner. Short. Turn around, he is short. Just grazed the net. Cameron Hildreth runs it up. So he and Witt, two new entries into the lineup for Steve Forbes and Wake Forest. Witt oh, tried to play the angle and it wouldn't drop. Everything but the finish. That thing was halfway down with wit. Unlucky. Tried to use the rectangle. I know it looks like a square, but it is rectangle. It is wider than it is high. So all squares are rectangles, That's right. but not all rectangles are square. Something like that, sure. <laughs> a little trigonometry class. And 
geometry of basketball. Crowd doesn't like it as Clark goes to the bench. So they gave that last foul to Kihei Clark. So he's on Tony Bennett's bench. He's got two. We'll see if they gamble and try to bring him back. I guess they will depend on how this game is going. They need to start guard back on the floor. Here's the Walton Kafaro clash, and this time it's Kafaro. Franklin just inside the free throw line. It's a soft bounce. Arm on Franklin. And so. You think about the shots Wake Forest is getting versus the shots Virginia is getting. Neither team really is getting good looks. Both these teams are breathing fire defensively. Both teams around 20% shooting for the game. Nine and a half minutes to go in our first half. Arabia, his progress impeded. Hildreth lost the handle. It's a two-on-one. Beekman to the rim. Arabia got a piece of it. LaRavia with a big time block in traffic. Jake LaRavia never gave up on that play as Beekman tried to attack the rack. And it was a two on one. I felt like Beekman should have went back and forth and they gave LaRavia an angle. They took advantage. Hildreth lost it on the way up. The freshman from Worthing, England, couldn't complete the play. Here's the jumper. Stockman, rebound. Just the second three-point attempt by the Cavaliers this afternoon, and Statman knocks it down. You don't see a lot of splash downs from downtown by the boys in white. They only make five a game. And that's 14 to the ACC. Wake Forest makes about eight per game. Hildreth is inside the line, never got to the rim. Well, boy, do they do that. They make you take tough shots, and they contest those tough shots. Cavaliers on a 7-0 run. Kafaro off the back iron, all the way back out to Franklin. He wants three. He has three. Score in the ACC yet to score, and really, Tim. Hasn't had many good chances. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even remember him taking two shots, but apparently he has because he has been silent here tonight. Well, one of them missed everything at this end of the court earlier in the half. Already we're inside of eight minutes to go in our first half of play. Tom Murray and Tim Scarborough with you. Court side along with our ACC production crew. We're talking about a guy averaging 21 points a game. There's Arabia to the rescue. So LaRavia spins that one in. Three-point game. LaRavia, first field goal of the game. He's got a couple of free throws as well. How about Franklin again? Unloving and unleashing a three. Okay. I see you, Franklin. The junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, and the transfer from Indiana. Couple of threes in the first half for the Cavaliers. He can score, averaging 12 a game. Musius, difficult turnaround. Milicic fighting with Arabia along the baseline, and that's Cavalier basketball. That shot Musius just took, you see a lot these days. Virginia, uh, Villanova really does that a lot. They penetrate one way and reverse pivot to, to, to make space. Musius just one of three from the floor. Cavaliers 30% shooting as a team. Kafaro going for the high percentage, and it bounced off the iron. Give it back to him. He's aggressive. He wants it. Walton not backing down from Kafaro one bit. Shot clock is at five for Franklin. That's the handle on the tricky dribble. Williams crossed it over, ran into Franklin. Oh, offensive foul. <laughs> Oh, Bill Covington, the official all over that one. And that is more of a player, a true player control foul. He's out of control. Even if the defense is not totally set, if you're going to barrel your way to the basketball court, as long as they're in relatively good guarding position, 
They're going to give you a charge every time. Williams had a game high 25 points in the losing effort at home against the Duke in the most recent game for Wake. That's why it's seven rebounds. Stepman. Just maybe it's that spot. It's a 15 to 2 run, Tim. Williams still can't get in the box score. Gotta knock this one down. Williamson did. Rip of the ropes for Wake Forest. Against Virginia, shots like that absolutely have to go more so than most games. Because against most teams, you might get six shots like that in a game. Virginia, you won't get another one like that. Wide open. Two of eight on three-point attempts for the Demon Deacons in the 29th May 3 for the season for Davian Williamson. A little more urgency getting out on Franklin. Carpo is being aggressive in the starting lineup here tonight for the first time in this season. They're really going to the UCS was open underneath. Milicic might have deflected that one, and a foul was called. Williams is leading the ACC in assists with five a game. Right there, delivers the package at the doorstep, but they forgot to ring the bell. You got to put that in. So Laravia picked up a foul in the process. That's his second, Tim, so he's on the bench. And how often do you see a negative play when someone misses a shot they should make? You miss the shot, and then someone gets a foul that wouldn't have occurred if you had just put that thing in the bucket. There's 25% shooting in the first half for Wake. They're third best in the league at 48%, but stifled so far by this Virginia D. As most people are on a nightly basis when you play the Cavaliers, this is what you get. Franklin wanted to get another three. Look, again, Williamson tried to push, get a secondary break, but there's five guys inside that three-point line in white, making it very difficult. That back line defense, no real driving lanes. They'll give you the passing lanes on that perimeter, although that was a deflection there. But when you drive, you're driving into a lion's den. You see what Franklin did last year at Indiana with 40. For Virginia, that is a scintillating shooting. <laughs> Tough to beat Virginia and Tony Bennett on this floor. He is 177 and 33 as the head coach of the Cavaliers here inside J.P. Just remarkable, remarkable home court advantage. This crowd, they fill this building up, and they're into the game, and they really cheer on good defensive plays. So Walton missed the three. Musius bounces it off of Virginia. 13th year for Tony Bennett. Went over 300 wins as the head coach of Virginia. Tony Bennett, three-time national coach of the year. 07, 15, and 18. Man, 13 years goes fast, doesn't it? Yeah, he's done pretty good against Wake Forest as well. With the 10 and 4 mark. That win number 300, November 26th at home against Lehigh. 61 to 43 for Coach Bennett. 52-year-old from Green Bay, Wisconsin, watches Walton. He wanted a foul on the way back up the court. He made a tough shot. And if you're going to make tough shots, you're going to have to make tough shots, I should say, to get out of here in this building with a win. Because they're going to make you take a lot of tough ones. So Walton up to five points. He averages close to eight per game as the seven-footer in the middle for Wake Forest. And when you look at the spacing on the floor, Virginia was literally three on the perimeter, two on the block. That's old-school Boston Celtics basketball for you. Stabman had it knocked away. There's Cavaro. And a whistle. And a foul coming up against Wake Forest. That was on C. So Virginia with the basketball and the lead. Virginia, which made just three three-pointers in the win against Virginia Tech. They were three of 13. And in this game today, Virginia now four of six from long distance with Cafaro at the free throw line. Who are those Cavaliers? Exactly. Four for six from three? You can credit Statman and Franklin for most of that work. They both have two made threes. Notre Dame, Virginia Tech, Boston College, and Clemson 
That's the game that will follow us on our doubleheader. Faro picks up the personal for Virginia. Also later tonight, Tim, it's Georgia Tech at North Carolina. Second on Kafaro. So back to the bench. And Michael DeVoe from Georgia Tech has been shooting lights out this entire season. DeVoe, the MVP of the ACC tournament a season ago in Greensboro. This year, we're off to the Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York. Will be the destination for these teams. The radio into the paint, out of the paint. Williamson deep in the shot clock. Again, you gotta make tough shots. Williamson, Williamson, a tough shot that. Williamson never panicked. The poise and composure to knock down the three for Wake Forest. They are now three of ten from long distance. And Williamson has nine points. Slapped away from Gardner. On the reload, Larabia. And that one went off of Gardner. Williamson was up against the shot clock. Larabia gave it to him with just four on it. But a little bit of herky-jerky. You got a big on you. You know he should contest because you don't have time to drive. But a defensive error, if you will. But Williamson still made a tough shot. I don't know about you, Tim, but I love that camera right behind the back. Oh, yeah. You saw that crafty dribble from Williamson to free himself up from the defender. Moravia muscling his way in for two. There's that reverse pivot we talked about earlier. So Moravia now with six points. Alondis Williams has not scored in the first half. He's taken three shots and missed them all. 21 points a game. Gardner had it knocked away by Walton and Williams. Wake along the baseline. Step on the line, and that's Virginia basketball. 159 to go in a rapidly paced first half of action. So glad that you're with us for ACC basketball. And check out that score, Tim. We are all tied up. And I feel like Wake Forest kind of withstood a Virginia punch to the face with those three-point shots. The, the building was buzzing. The Wake Forest has kind of crept back into this, and now we're tied at 23 with two minutes to go in the first half. Tony Bennett and Virginia led by as many as nine points. And on a 10-0 run. Out of the corner, that's a two. Franklin. Franklin was feeling it from the perimeter, nonetheless, that time inside the arc. And he is into double digits. First player in our game to get some double figures in scoring. Williams, he's into the box score. Finally, late in this first half. Probably could have got a delay of game there, too, after he scored. But Virginia's not interested in taking it out of the net and pushing it at you, so it didn't seem like he delayed the game. <laughs> Londis Williams. Shedrick. That's a rim bender. A big time delivery by Franklin. They were chasing him through the screen. Came off the curl, delivered it right where he needed to. Shedrick sends it down. Here's the steal. Beekman for the jam. Beekman had one earlier like that. This time finishing with authority. Williamson had nowhere to go. Back to back slam. For Virginia. Williamson. Musius on the boards. Big time put back. Yeah, they needed that too. Quiet this crowd. Only about a two-second differential game and shot. By the way, Virginia this season, Tim, undefeated with the halftime lead. They're seven and zero. They've got it right now by two. He needs to go. It's only six on the clock. Beekman, Milicic, last second chance, three-quarter court. Would not have counted. Would not have counted. So Virginia will have that two-point lead 
going to the locker room, 29-27. Really good coaches here tonight. Accomplished coaches on both sides of the court. Virginia's won nine in a row in the series, 10 of the last 11. They are 7-2 and two against Wake Forest here at John Paul Jones Arena, and they have the ball to start the second half and the lead. T.J. Clark, number zero. He got those two fouls, only played seven minutes in that first half. He's back on the floor now for the Cavaliers. Has the basketball right now. Hits a cutting Franklin from the free throw line. Now that was the definition of catch and in rhythm, all in one motion to hit that shot. And it was great execution. He got the pin down screen. Franklin came off ready to fire, knocks it down. 12 points now for Franklin. He leads all scorers in our game this afternoon. Double team on Walton. Oh, jump ball. Held ball, held ball, and Wake Forest will maintain possession. We talked about Walton, how early they let him go. But right there on the catch, here comes the double. Nothing but trouble. And they get the tie-up. They don't get the possession. They'll get the next one. Williamson on the drive. The spin cycle. Halfway down and out. Deserves a better fate, perhaps. Franklin. Clark. Stop and start. Clark putting on the dribbling clinic. Not a whole lot to show for it with 10 on the shot clock. Probing the defense. Clark on the corner. Good hands. Now it is Virginia basketball, Tim, but just two on the shot clock. So you got a veteran team, though. You got a veteran point guard, virtually a starter his whole career, and Key A. Clark, but now he's not inbounding. But they're where they'll get a good one. Clark. That did not hit the rim. It hit the net, but did not hit the rim at a shot clock violation against Virginia. Got his feet set, just couldn't get enough on that one. Draws a perplexed look from Tony <laughs> Bennett on that Virginia bench. Seven straight years for the NCAA tournament. That's a school record. Ten straight years in the postseason. You take out 2020, obviously. There's a whistle behind the play. It's Bill Covington Jr. with the signification. So they gave it to Gardner. That's the second on Jaden Gardner. Tony Bennett coming to Virginia with a rich history. But man, he has really kind of made himself stand out in terms of you know, who, who is the best coaches in the state of Virginia and certainly in this program over the years. He has really performed. Cavaliers won 18 games a season ago. 13 and 4 in ACC play. That was the best record in the league. And they were 10 and 1 at home. Had to forfeit in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. Kafaro. The tip. Gardner. And Gardner still can't find the mark. Tried to tip that one home. Leading scorer of Virginia. No field goal so far for Jaden Gardner. Transfer from East Carolina. Grad transfer. Built on here. Over Laravia. There you go. Touch. Maybe that will get him going. Tim, he'd been 0 for 6 from the floor prior to that jump shot. Close in to the rim. Showed nice fundamentals in the fall away. Can he do it at the defensive end against Laravia? Musius uncorks the three. Laravia grabs it. Shake his defender. Got it to Walton. Too strong. Man, a couple of bricks inside, but again, that is the defensive pressure from Virginia. They make you take tough shots. Even the ones you think should be a little easier turn out to be tough ones. Ball comes off to Williamson. Keep in mind, Virginia limits its opposition to just over 58 points per game. Best in the conference, and as Tim mentioned, 11th in the country. Hey. Moravia, a lot of moves. Can't finish. <laughs> he had to work 
to extract himself just to get a shot right there. And by the time he let it go, I feel like he was out of gas. Virginia has led the nation in scoring defense seven times under Tony Bennett. Best in the conference so far this year in the ACC. Clark drops it low, Gardner. No double. Interesting, he took himself into a double team. Didn't convert, but he got himself fouled. Arabia so got three. Arabia, yeah, Arabia just got his third, Tim, right. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to watch that. So Gardner at the free throw line. 76% of the season. Team C will be checking in as Gardner misses that one. Well, we have a moment of work from Coyote Tractor. There are better known tractors in the world than Coyote, but there's not a single tractor ever been built that's better equipped to do the dirty work. Coyote, we dig dirt. So that's one of two from Gardner. Saucy <laughs> as the lead. Seesaw is up. <laughs> Two point game. Inside. Oh, give me Gardner that. challenge by Walton. Man, Dallas Walton. And how about C holding the basketball in one arm, helping his teammate up with the other without traveling? The Williams defense. lost the footing. Here we go. A rare fast break opportunity. Franklin trying to beat two defenders. And he does. <laughs> The step through and the left hand for Franklin. Big time. So Franklin now with 14 points. He's the only player in our game in double digits right now. Six of eight from the floor for Armin Franklin. Walton got free and he jams it. Again, the passing of Williams leads the ACC in scoring, but also assists. Nice. Back to a cut by Walton as well. Once again, the lead is two. Clark trying to work that baseline against Williamson. And did he step on the end line? Tony Bennett did not like that call. He got called for a foul, Tim. Wow, that's a big foul. And that is his third year with super seniors. It is. They play their whole career. Amazing. They one school four years, and then they get to play a fifth year at a different school. Some of them have made some huge impact. Well, Franklin is one of those guys. He comes over from Indiana. Alondis Williams from Oklahoma. There he is for three. Lucy is trying to bail him out. Good defense. Jump ball. The possession arrow this time towards Virginia. And man, if they've done a great job on the top scorer in the ACC today. He has had some tough sledding. And he's not the only superstar to ever come into this building and not leave with their projected numbers. But man, they have made it difficult. Road trip continues for Wake Forest on the road at Georgia Tech on Wednesday. That's also the only regular season meeting between those two programs. Again, look at the look at the spacing. There are four guys inside the three-point line at any given time with Virginia. Statman. Williams the rebound. He is the leading rebounder for the Demon Deeks, close to seven per game. Williamson on Beacon. Now Williams. Wow, a wicked spin. And then he got fouled. So Franklin gets the foul, his first personal. That'll put Williams at the free throw line. First attempts from the line tonight for Williams. Wake has a team four of five so far. Three point, free throw shooting line. 
71% of the season for Williams at the strike. Williams played two years at Oklahoma as part of the NCAA tournament with the Sooners a season ago for the graduate student from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And his free throw work has tied us up at 36 inside of 13 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Franklin guarded by Williams. For the shot, though, Henderson says, but you can see when Franklin catches it on the perimeter, he's getting a little more attention than he would normally get because he hadn't been shooting it well from downtown. But today, when he's gotten open looks, he stroked it a couple of times. So Williams, that's his third personal. He's coming out of the game for Wake Forest. McCray has come in. Seeing action in his eighth game this season. He's on the defense against Franklin. Seven on the shot clock for Franklin. That's the three. How about Franklin? Third three-pointer of the night for Armand. Had 15 points in the win against Virginia Tech. Now has 17 on seven of nine shooting and three threes for Franklin. Walton in trouble. Oh. Threw it into the backcourt. And it rolls out of bounds. Virginia ball. Steve Forbes can't be happy with the lack of offensive productivity from Wake Forest. But you certainly don't want to throw it away like that. Beekman on the inbounds. Three-point lead for Virginia. And they extended that lead. Interesting that they only put 20 on the shot clock. That's Franklin. Virginia's led by as many as nine. He's back in the first half. Franklin first free throws of the evening now. Moving towards six o'clock on the eastern seaboard. And a lot of people thinking about the impending weather in this part of the country as well. And for a, a vast number of folks who could be affected by that. Including people sitting at this table. <laughs> The focus is on ACC basketball at the moment. <laughs> Here comes the crowd once again. Moravia. Trying to get by Stackman. Tries a different avenue. Shedrick came over. Oh, I think they're going to the bucket. I saw Bill Covington. I don't know if that was goaltending. So if it is, you would score the bucket and a free throw upcoming for a three-point play opportunity in I, I feel like looking at that live, the ball was barely above the rim. And Shedrick just came over and slotted it away. See if we can take a look from this angle. Yeah, that's clearly going up. I mean, he, it just got out of his hands. And I think, I know, they got that wrong. And Tony Bennett... Is pleading with them to look at it, and I don't know if they can. I don't think it's a reviewable play at this stage of the game. But they, they missed that one, though, honestly. And if you're going to miss one, you hate to miss one where it results in literal points for the other team. And a chance for a three-point play for the radio. Perhaps some poetic justice. <laughs> Bill Covington Jr., Tony Henderson, and Lamar Simpson officiating our game this evening. Good crew. They missed that one, though. Two-point game, beacon with the basketball. Shot clock at 10 for Virginia and Staten. A twisting shot. That one will count. 
Stabbin has a chance at the three-point play. Stabbin was down early, and now Steve Forbes' group is overplaying him on the perimeter. He's able to go off the dribble where he's really good at slashing through the basket. So, a fine performance that has 12 minutes left to continue. So now Stabbin with the old-school three-point play has nine points. And Stabbin... He averages just 2.6 points per game. Laravia shed the defender. Shed Cedric. Laravia is really good going off the dribble and going under control and then exploding to the rim. 12 points now for Laravia. We said he needed to be the second scorer tonight, but we thought Williams, who has really struggled, would be the first scorer, but he has not been able to get off tonight. Credit the Virginia defense. Six games in a row, double-figure scoring for Lou Rabia. Shedrick came over. Stepping on the run, trying to get by Whit, and he lays it in. Okay, Cody. <laughs> he has tied his career high with those 11 points after the layup. Beekman, he goes to the bucket. He gets fouled. I think they're going to wave that off, judging by the way Tony Bennett just popped off the bench. Let's take a look. He gets the poke away. He got fouled there. He got fouled there. I get it. But once you let him play through, that's an and one. Count it. Bill Covington, however, sees it differently. Now, if he would have called that a half court, Tony Bennett wouldn't have had an issue. But he waited till he scored and then said, no, he got fouled before the shot. Now, there was a bench warning issue to Virginia. There's Witt. He called the bump there, but to me, he doesn't take any more dribbles or one more step when he scored. I feel like that's a continuation. Well, it really does depend on when he blew the whistle. So Beekman is now on the bench for Virginia. Williams has come back in for Wake Forest. This is Clark. Tony Bennett was about 30 feet onto the floor on that one, too. He's had some intense discussions with the officials here in this second half. And maybe he had a discussion with Gardner at halftime as well. Somebody was playing below their pay grade, but no longer Gardner. Moravia is the leading scorer for Wake Forest. He's got 12 on 5 of 9 shooting. Alonis Williams, who leads the ACC in scoring, has just 4 points and 1 of 5 from the score. Williams with the ball. They've got to get number 31 in black going. Moravia's done his part, number 0. He's got 12. Shot clock at 5 for Williams. Here comes the double. Try to send it out to Williamson, and it's out of bounds. You know, you tend to think that the passer is the person that that was the fault of, but to me, I feel like Williamson should have been in that lane to give himself an option to throw the ball to. The 11th turnover of the game for Wake Forest. Virginia has seven. And Williams has six turnovers. And just two assists. They have done the job on him this this evening. Eleven misses. Another air ball. A Shedrick. So they're looking at the shot clock because there's 25. Yeah, the shot by sure. Franklin did not look like it hit the rim. <laughs> oh, it certainly did not. It hit the net. Yeah, it should not have been a reset. Franklin's been on target most of the day, Tim. Seven of ten from the floor and three three-point baskets. But that one was substandard. So I believe they're going to look to see uh, where the shot clock was. Certainly under 25. They, they have it at 11 now. So we'll see Steve Forbes will have his guys come over. So it was Shedrick who made the save on the baseline. 
off the missed shot by Franklin. Wake Forest trailed by two at halftime. 29-27. You know, Wake Forest is one of the bigger teams in the country in terms of size. But Tony Bennett decided tonight that he was going to play his bigs together as well to match that size. But here we go. That ball did not touch the rim. But I can understand from the angle of the shot the scorer's keepers are, it could have looked like it did. But it, it clearly didn't. It grazed the bottom of the net. But I don't see. If it would have touched the rim, the ball would have changed directions. And you don't see it. It went straight down through the bottom of that net without hitting the rim. So now it's just a matter of where the game clock was and the shot clock was. They'll get that administered. Here's a different angle. And you can see how that ball was at least five inches short of the rim. This one you may not be able to tell. Let's see. Yeah, that, that, it never made it. It didn't reach the rim. It's great awareness, though, by Shedrick to stay with the play and keep the possession alive for Virginia. So it looks like they're going to leave it at 11 seconds on the shot clock, 9.26 on game. And Tony Bennett <laughs> is a little irritated with this group today. He's, he's had a lot of conversations with the officiating crew. Well, there's four points that you can think about that went against him in this game. And in a tight game, that means something. So just four seconds on the shot clock. A move for Gardner. The Ravens stayed with him. And then Walton made the rebound. Shedrick picked up the foul. And I think that was a good job of the officials not bailing Gardner out when he threw his body into the defenders. Walton and LaRavia were both there. Lucius as well. They, they built the wall defensively and they didn't resist. LaRavia. Transfer from Indiana State in his first year in the Wake Forest program. Leads him with 12 points. He's the only Demon Deacon double digits. Gardner is kind of bursting two for ten now for Virginia, number one. Right. Gardner has it. Saved by Beekman. Gardner's got seven points. He's the leading scorer for Virginia. So the production we expected is coming from different sources for these teams. Although we did mention LaRavia needs to be the number two piece behind Williams. And he's produced. Musius has the rebound. Stabman almost oh. stole it, and look who's got the basketball. <laughs> Tony Bennett ball. He knows what to do with it still. Tony Bennett was a pretty good player. In college and in the NBA. Out of Wisconsin Green Bay. Here's for his father, Dick. Two-time player of the year in that conference. Scored over 2,200 career points. Really good player. And a teammate of Mike Jaminski for the Charlotte yeah, Hornets yeah, as well. Yeah. Shot clock's at seven. Williamson. Oh, they needed that one, Tim. They needed it, and they cast it in from downtown. And Williamson now with double figures, and he has hit some clutch shots late in possessions there. Wake Forest needed that shot in the arm, if you will. Nine times in the double figure scoring this season for Williamson after the three ball. Shot clock inside of 10 for Virginia. Gardner trying to harvest some points from this possession. Can't do it. Williams the rebound. Williamson, Walton offensive glass, Williams for three, oh. three straight possessions now, two, two big offensive rebounds, they have a chance to throw a shot, Williams lays it up and in, that's what happens though, it's kind of like baseball, you give a team an extra strike, and then the next pitch is a home run, that time they were able to score in their third shot. Now it's just a two-point game. Come on, Wake Forest climbing back into this one. And Williams now six points after that layup. Clark, Shedrick, Loravia. Good resistance at the rim without fouling. 
Chance to tie or take the lead with a three for Wake. Williams flips it out to Musius. He hits the three, and the Dicks go in front, and a timeout on the court. Isaiah Musius for Wake Forest. Um, but Williams is the guy that kind of created all of that activity, his ability to score. And then he found people in the other shots. He's now got a, a few more assists. He's got three assists. Still got the seven turnovers, though, so they've really kind of made it a tough game for him. He's certainly scoring below his 21 points a game scoring average. But that little stretch, we show why he's the, one of the top players in the ACC. Double made threes from UCS for Wake. He's got 43 made on the season, and that's tops on the team. Inside of six minutes to go in regulation. And Forrest hasn't won a game in this series since 2013. Clark kept his footing, they got the shot away. Just gets it off, too. Hey, Clark, preseason all ACC four year starter. He's been quiet here this evening. Just two points. Williams back and down. Nice. Knocked away Beekman. Back to Williams. Didn't get the soft bounce. Staying with it. Williams, third chance. Woo! And he scores. <laughs> and a little flex to boot. Man, did he have to work for that. Wasn't great for the shooting percentage, but Steve Forbes has to love the result. Eight points now for Williams. Musius the steal. Virginia does a great job of staying away from live ball turnovers. Moravia got fouled as Gardner got back. And Wake Forest right now in the midst of a 10-0 run and leading by three with free throws upcoming. Virginia hasn't scored in five minutes and 27 seconds either. A sign, a, a recipe for disaster. But they still only trail by three. With those live ball turnovers turning to quick, high percentage shots, something that Virginia doesn't like to give up. They foul there. Laravia has a chance for two. He's a short. Gardner out. Shedrick in for Tony Bennett. Statman's also trying to check in. What an environment, though. Clark coming out. Bennett trying to push all the right buttons with the radio at the free throw line. This is a crowd that senses that the team needs them right now. Hasn't scored in over five minutes. One of two for the radio. Now three of five from the free throw line and 13 points for Jake Moravia. Steve Forbes' team trying to go on the road here at Virginia and get a victory against a team that has beaten his program nine straight overall in the series. Well, they're in position to steal one here, but a lot of time for UVA Cavaliers to get it going again. Gotta find a bucket though from someone. How about Musius? He's all over the court. Throws it off of Virginia. Isaiah Musius hit that critical three a moment ago. And now makes the play on the defensive end. Right here, just going for the loose ball. Really, Statman trying to get out of the way, but Musius able to hit it off of him. And that possession goes back to Wake Forest. A four point lead and the ball. Which in a tight game like this, where points are at a premium, that four point lead feels bigger than it is. Wake Forest is 3 and 3 in ACC. Play low, Ravia got free. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, when they talk about posterizations, that was a post Malone. A face tattoo. How about the pass by Williams? To find LaRavia. Yeah, that was a great job of drawing up a backdoor cut. Laravia. Eagles and Tigers, you want to check your local listings for the game in your area. Eric Collins, Terrence Oglesby will bring you through that one. And how about this? What were you doing February 6, 2010? <laughs> Wake was winning in overtime here at John Paul Jones Arena the last time they did so. A lot of time between them. Had two kids since then. <laughs> <laughs> the Faro fighting with C. 
The C is going to be angry, my friends, because he just picked up a personal. 626 drought and counted. 13 0 run. Not a good stretch for Tony Bennett's group. They've got to break that drought with this possession. Time is running out. Largest lead of the game right now for Wake Forest at six. Shot clock to ten. Beekman around the edge. Steps underneath and lays it in. How about that footwork? That's a 13 nothing run for Wake Forest. Yeah, they needed that badly. One for their last eight now. Now they need a stop. Arabia charging to the rim. Williams cleans up the mess. And again, he knocked the ball out. They scored with no warning. So you really need a stop there, I believe. Williams to double digits in scoring. He's done that every game this season. Gardner the turnaround. And he gets it. Slugfest here in Charlottesville. Gotta love it. Williams trying to get by Beekman. Unsuccessfully for the moment. Back and down. Flexing again. Alondis Williams. I don't know what to tell you other than that's a grown man. Tafaro. Count it. Put on your big boy pants if you're going to guard Alondis Williams. Beekman, all he could do to offer resistance to no match. And then the other end, great catch, great finish by Carfaro. So Musius picked up the foul. Carfaro. Carfaro. Now two for nine from the field. He got the start tonight. Rewarded for that good game he had versus Virginia Tech. Now he comes up with the steal. Gardner trying to join the play. Tried to save it and win it to the front row. Appears to be okay. He is, but how is the fan? I think everybody's all right. <laughs> if he did the, the landing, the person who broke his fall. Let's find out how that person is. <laughs> Everybody appears to be okay down there in the first two rows. Wow. Jaden Gardner, 6'6", 246 pounds, coming yeah. at you. Right. Inside of two minutes to go in regulation. Another big possession here defensively for the Cavs. Demon Deeks, one and two away from their campus on the road of the ACC. Shot clock's at five. Musius, number one, hits it. For two, Isaiah Musius, another monster bucket for Wake Forest. He has made some timely plays at both ends. Has 12 now, and he also has four assists, and most of that has come in this little stretch where they went on a 13-0 run. He kind of took over the game, and then Musius obviously with some timely plays of his own. Eustace is on his season average in scoring. Williams had just two points in the first half to wait. Clark trying to weave his way into the corner, Franklin. Beekman lays it off the glass and in. Calculated the angle on the layup. Williams lost it. Grab by C. And the final minute. A four-point game. Cross-court, Musius. Catch and release. C comes it out to Williams. How big was that? Beekman fouls Williams. Hardeem C with a big play. Nothing special. Just tipped it home when he needed to. Just enough on that. The missed shot from the from the corner. And look at him climb the ladder and tip it and preserve a possession 
a key possession for his team here late. He's got just three points in the game, but what a play by C. Williams now three of three from the free throw line and 13 points. Again, just two in the first half for Alondis Williams, who averages close to 21 per game, best in the ACC. He's got eight rebounds and four assists. Now he does have the eight turnovers of the 13. Virginia with 10 turnovers of their own. But that drought that they went through here late in the game really kind of put them in a bad position here, needing the score in bunches for a team that really never, never scores in bunches. This would be a really good road win for Steve Forbes and the, and the Demon Deacons if they're able to come in here and steal one. And again, last year they were 3 and 15. Had a couple of stops and starts with COVID protocols. Just six total wins. This would be their fourth ACC win if this score holds up. And that would have put their total of ACC wins from a season ago with Williams at the free throw line. The lead is six. Clark. Beekman almost lost it. Statman needs to shoot it. Wake has the board, and Musius, with just 34.3 seconds to go. And keep in mind, this is a place where Virginia does not lose. Last 10 seasons, ACC home games for Tony Bennett. Yeah. Tim, their record is 74 and 10. Nobody and the ACC has a better record over that spot. Very few have been able to come in here and leave with a smile on their faces. But Steve Forbes better start being ready to show his team. If Mucius could knock these down, it's Tony Bennett's group again, not built for comebacks. First free throw of the game for Mucius. Musius has not shot a lot of free throws, now just 23 on the season, but 82%. And he's got them both with a nice, soft roll. How about an eight-point lead? And just over 30 seconds to go for Beacon. Virginia needs points in a hurry. Franklin, that's a three. Gardner oh, misses the easy layup. It from point blank. It's been that kind of night for Gardner, though. Nine points for Gardner. Now three of 14 from the floor. Wow. And that miss from close range. He'll drive and lose the handle. And Virginia is going to give this one up to visiting Wake Forest, which has not won here since 2010. Kind of an anticlimactic finish for Virginia, but what a win for the Demon Deacons on the road. They had lost nine in a row in the series and had not won since January of 2013. But they win this one.